This is video uh, 56 in our series uh, Electrical Circuit Analysis. A reminder that the uh, playlist for all of our videos is at the website digital-university.org. Um, in videos 54 and 55 we had discussed the transient growth currents through an inductor. Now in this video we want to discuss the transient decay current through an inductor. And in the previous videos, what we did was we had just a constant voltage source, a resistor, and a, uh, an inductor. And when we threw a switch connecting the battery to the circuit, then what we discussed is that initially there was a voltage induced across this coil, and it had this polarity. so that it opposed the flow of the current into the coil. That's just Lenz's law. But eventually, of course, the current rose to the steady value of just E over R. And then once it reached that uh, maximum value, it didn't change anymore. And since the voltage across the coil depends upon the rate of change of the current, when the current reached that steady value, there was no longer a voltage induced across the coil, and just had a current flowing through it equal to E over R. But in this inductor, in this coil, there is a magnetic field there. Now, if we were to um, remove the battery from the uh, circuit, say at time t equals zero, write it here, at t equals zero, the battery is still there, and the current that's going through the coil is just E over R. And now a fraction of a second later, at t equals zero plus, Let's say we, we remove the battery out of the circuit. So now this is gone. So there is no more voltage source. Therefore, there is no current being going through the uh, circuit. But in the coil, there still is that magnetic field. But now with no current flowing through the coil, that magnetic field is going to collapse. Well, remember now that when we did have the battery here, and we hooked it up, and initially there was this induced voltage of this polarity, this is why, this is why the current was slowly increasing with the magnetic field expanding, when now of course the battery is gone, and the magnetic field is collapsing. When the, magnetic, when the magnetic field collapses, the magnetic flux cuts across the lines of the coil here, and it will once again induce a voltage across the coil, but the collapsing magnetic field induces an opposite polarity. So now it is like this. And this induced voltage now can act as a, um, a generating voltage. So this can then drive a current across our circuit like this. Now, of course, eventually the magnetic field is going to totally collapse. And when it does that, there will no longer be an induced voltage across the coil. And that means that this current here is eventually just going to decay to zero. So this is the decay current. But notice that the direction of the decay current through the resistor and through the coil is in the same direction as what it was when the battery was hooked up to this circuit. So the direction of the decay current through our coil is the same as the direction of the growth current through the coil. What we want to do now is derive an expression um, 
for the decay current that is now present. And if we sum the um, voltage drops, we will have that I times R plus L di dt equals zero. We want to solve for I. And it's not just a simple algebraic equation as you saw in our previous two videos we had a similar type of equation where sure we have I but we also have its derivative the instantaneous rate of I with respect to time. So once again we have to solve a, uh, a simple differential equation so we bring this over to this side and we have minus IR and you can see probably already what, how we're headed with this we can bring I over to here so we'll have DI over I and of course when you integrate something like that that is just the natural log of I so what we'll do is divide both sides of the equation by I multiply both sides by dt. So we have L di over I equals minus R dt. Bring this in a better focus. Now let's divide both sides of the equation by L. And now we're all set to integrate here and here. This would give us the natural log of I equals minus R over L times T, the time. That's a real simple integral too. Now in each case, this is the natural log of I, and that's just going to be T. In each case, we're going to have an arbitrary constant of integration from here and here, but we can uh, lump these together in just a single arbitrary constant. We'll call that k prime. And then at this point we can take advantage of the property of natural logarithms. E say raised to the natural log of x. That is just x. So Let's raise each side of the equation, e raised to this power and e raised to this power. So we have e raised to the natural log of i, that is just i, and that will equal e raised to this power Now, here we have in the exponent, we're summing two terms. So that would be the same thing as e to the minus r over l times t times e to the plus k prime. Because when you multiply, you add exponents. So this expression and this expression are the same. Well, this is just a constant, and of course e is a constant, so we can just call this a new constant. Call that k. So this equals k times this. So here we have i equals k e to the minus r over l times t. Now, k is a constant. If we use through our initial conditions, we can find out exactly uh, what kind of constant k is, because we know that back here 
Just before we took the battery out at time t equals zero, the current flowing through the coil was just E over R. So let's make use of that. When T equals zero, I equals E over R. When T equals zero, we have E to the zero. Of course, that's just one. So we have K times one, that's just K equals I, but when T equals zero, I equals E over R. So we know what K is. K is just equal to E over R, so let's put that in. And there we have then our expression for the decay current. So we can see that here, this is a negative exponent. So again, as we talked about in the previous video, that's the same thing as 1 over E to the R over L times T. So as time goes on, this becomes bigger and bigger. The fraction becomes smaller and smaller. So I'm multiplying E over R by a smaller and smaller number until eventually it becomes so small it's just negligible. So the decay current looks something like this. Here's time. Here's the current. It starts off at a value E over R. We know that. And then just exponentially falls off to zero. So that's the decay current. Okay, that's all we wanted to derive in this video. Um, before we wrap things up though, let's ask ourselves what about the decay voltage? We know that the voltage across the coil equals L di dt. We know what I is, so we should be able to take the derivative and get an expression for the, for the decay voltage across the coil. However, before we consider the voltage, the decay voltage across the coil, what we need to, to discuss is why we need to have a decay resistor in here. And that's what we'll do in the next video. And then in the next video, we'll take a look in more detail um, as to the nature of the decay voltage across the uh, inductor. But um, in this video, we just wanted to derive the expression for the decay current. And again, we got that without too much trouble. This expression, and it roughly looks like this. Anyway, uh, come back and join us in the next video, and we'll talk more about the properties of the decay voltage across the coil.